One of the most transformative cross-cultural experiences I've had was during my visit to the De Democratic People's Republic of Korea, commonly known as North Korea. The country largely unknown and inaccessible, intriguing, and despite many people questioning um, my decision to go there, I was driven by a desire to see and understand firsthand how life truly was in such a second uh, nation. One of the first things that surprised me was the locals' humor, warmth, and sociability. They knew how to tell jokes and had a great sense of com 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 camaraderie, often inviting me to join them in a cultural uh, uh, setting, including dancing with them or singing with them. Surprisingly, I found that North Korea boasts, boasts some of the uh, region's best beers, uh, a fact you wouldn't usually associate with uh, such isolated nation. A couple of moments stand out as particularly in, uh, enlightening in terms of the cultural differences. One individual, a travel companion, a Canadian-born in South Korea, uh, was frequently approached by locals. One of them came by in the street and curiously asked him uh, if he was free to read or watch any movie he desired back home. This interaction highlighted the distinct contracts, contrasts between the freedoms we often take for granted and the different realities faced in other parts of the world. Similarly, at the demilitarized zone, the, the, the tense border between the North and the South, a South Korean military officer asked our guide, whom he had seen many times before, if Pyongyang had electricity. The question underlined the stark contrast, contrast and the lack of understanding even between people from the same nation, yet politically divided for many years, creating such distinct cultures. These experiences underscore the importance of open dialogue and engagement in shifting perspectives. After my visit, although I'm still culturally very distant from North Korea, I have a much better understanding of their view of the world. And I'm less quick to jump to conclusions about uh, the region, having seen it with my own eyes. Through these interactions, I experienced firsthand how building cross-cultural relationships can break down barriers and foster understanding. This experience was a poignant reminder of the power of person-to-person -person connections in bridging profound cultural gaps. With the end of this episode, you now understand the importance of cross-cultural relationships and the key factors contributing to their success. You also gain practical tips that you can use in your personal and uh, professional life to build stronger, more enriching cross-cultural relationships. That's all for now. Building cross-cultural relationships is an enriching process of understanding, appreciation, and mutual growth. Remember, it's the differences that make these relationships so valuable. Join us in our next episode to discuss cross-cultural negotiation. Until then, stay curious. Stay open and stay connected.